Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening and happy Halloween. Um, I am Devin Grayson Wallace of Peace Action Maine. And here tonight, uh, we have our program about the intersection of US militarism and uh, climate issues in our country and the world. Uh, the United States Pentagon is the world's largest single institutional consumer of petroleum, yet its emissions are excluded from climate negotiations. So this evening, um, here to discuss this grievous oversight, we are honored to have Janet Wheel of Veterans for Peace and David Swanson of World Beyond War join us this evening. Each will speak for about 15 minutes, followed by a question and answer session. And we ask you to put your questions into the chat and we will read them out to the group. Um, and uh, we will also invite you to unmute yourself if that flow seems to be working better at the end of the evening. Um, as a reminder, this is being both recorded and live streamed, and we have muted everyone to prevent any background noise. And we're going to start our evening with Lisa Savage, who is going to remind us of what COP26 is. Many of you probably know Lisa Savage, but for anyone who doesn't, um, she founded the Maine Natural Guard and is very active on uh, all types of issues related to both militarism and climate. Thank you, Devin. Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. Thank you. Thanks everyone for being here. I'm going to be brief. Um, Peace Action Maine asked me if I'd contextualize tonight's remarks by two uh, people, David and Janet, both have been paying attention to this very important climate issue for a long time. And I'm really interested to hear what they're going to share with us tonight. I did want to remind uh, myself and everyone that we're on indigenous land. Um, I know that my neighbor uh, Barry Dana, past chief of the Penobscot, thinks it's ridiculous that people are flying to Glasgow for a climate conference because one of his big things is trying to convince everybody to stop flying and how bad that is for the planet. He and I often get in a little argument where I say, but Barry, it's really the military jets that are doing most of the polluting. He's like, but you know, here's what we can change. So COP26 is a coalition of the parties acronym, a gathering of uh, the nations and other organizations um, in the world to talk about setting meaningful climate goals. These uh, meetings often are referred to after the fact by the place where an agreement was reached, for instance, the Kyoto Protocols or the Paris Accord, where nations come together and say, well, we're not going to count our military emissions because that wouldn't be patriotic, but um, <clears throat> here are the goals that we're going to set for uh, reducing our admissions to keep climate chaos from spiraling out of control. It's kind of a see and be seen kind of event in uh, Glasgow. Uh, it's a chance for world leaders to kick the can further down the road about uh, meaningfully addressing their emissions. I know that Australia is up in arms because their prime minister is gonna come with a lot of smoke and mirrors goals and um, achievements that uh, people in Australia, environmentalists feel are um, kind of written on thin air. The Pentagon will not be attending. Um, I know David said he was happy to hear that. Sure, why would the biggest institutional consumer of fossil fuels show up at a coalition of the parties? Um, luckily, there is a People's Summit for Climate Justice that's uh, concurrent with COP26 this year. It runs from November 7th to 10th. Um, many people are participating in that uh, virtually. I'm part of a group with Vets for Peace in the US, Vets for Peace in the UK, and the Global Network Against Weapons and Nuclear Power in Space that will be doing a presentation uh, November 7th at 3 p.m. Wow. Eastern time about the climate impacts of militarism and also space programs, something we don't hear much about. So uh, that's all I was going to say about COP26. I'm really happy that you all are here this evening, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing from both of our presenters. So thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for that um, reminder and that introduction. Uh, the context is very appreciated. 